Hey there, team. Okay, so pretend I have a catchy hook and then some good quick bait to reel you into this video, and that this sentence was really baity and reactionary enough to keep you wondering and engaged with what I'm about to talk about. And now that you're kind enough to at least pretend to be interested, I want to talk about some early access games that I've been playing. Recently, I picked up a handful of games from the summer Steam sale, and I've played dozens of hours of them in a short amount of time. And while I was playing them, I was thinking that these games share a lot in common, but also are at various different stages of early access. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to make a video about it. I'm just going to do a few quick reviews of the games because I've been enjoying them, and I think early access games are some of the scariest games to try and invest money into, since you don't know if the games are ever going to get finished, or if they do get finished, if they'll ever be better than when they were in early access. Uh, anyway, this is the video. A few early access reviews! Woo! Yay! First up is Darksburg. So, Darksburg. Right, Darksburg is a co-op multiplayer game with movesets right out of a MOBA. Q, W, E, and R all use different abilities that vary from AoEs to skill shots. The big selling points of Darksburg are its core concept is basically, what if, left for dead, but Diablo? It plays like a fast-paced, roguelite, Diablo-ish game, and its art style is in that Victorian era, you know, vampires, werewolves, zombies, Bloodborne style, which is kind of my favorite art setting. Darksburg is in early access, and it's noticeably an unfinished project by a wide margin. At the moment, Darksburg has a co-op mode and a PvP mode that is in the vein of Left 4 Dead. You know, you have the one team playing zombies, and they get to play as Special Infected with unique abilities, and they try to stop the other team, which plays as the survivors. However, there is only one co-op campaign mission to play through at this point in time, and that one campaign takes around 40 minutes to complete, about as long as a Left 4 Dead campaign. While there are some aspects of the levels that are procedurally generated, you'll go through some of the same areas over and over again until you reach the rather underwhelming boss. And this is Darksburg's greatest weakness, the fact that the main game only has one campaign. Imagine playing Left 4 Dead and only having No Mercy to play over and over again. That's basically Darksburg to a greater or lesser degree. Now what separates Darksburg from Left 4 Dead is what the content being released seems to be focused on at the moment, which is characters. There are currently five playable characters with an in-development six character, and each character plays a little bit differently and a little bit the same. Like everybody has a dodge move, a leap, a dash, a roll, and some characters share similar moves but just color differently, like circular AoEs and laser beams. The team shares experience, so there is no reason to fight for kills, doesn't really matter, and after you level up, you get a selection of three random modifiers for the current run, like skill upgrades, damage increases, HP increases, you know, whatever. And that's the main roguelike element. You can also collect these purple stones throughout the game that you can deposit, which allow you to unlock permanent perks that exist throughout all playthroughs. But the real meat of the game is trying to create a build for your selected character throughout the course of the co-op campaign. And while the character diversity is nice and playing as the characters are fun, I do genuinely like playing the game and playing the characters. The fact that it's still the same 40 minute campaign at the end of the day doesn't really invoke replayability at the moment. You know, Darksburg shows a lot of promise, its art direction is great, and I'm always down to play some Left 4 Dead, but the big drawback at the moment for me is even with new characters being added or new perks or new builds, the one single four level campaign is just not enough content to really get a lot of enjoyment out of. Even for a game I got on the Steam sale, it still kind of feels like Darksburg just isn't really worth picking up yet until it has a few more courses for you to run its fun and well-designed characters through. All right, up next is Deep Rock Galactic. Now, Deep Rock Galactic 
is, to my surprise, not an early access game. Three out of my group of four friends who play this game with me all thought this game was early access, and we could not believe it wasn't. And I don't know why we all thought it, or why we all kind of still think it, but something about Deep Rock Galactic just feels early access. Anyway, let's get into it. So Deep Rock is a first person mining, shooting, running around game. You pick between four classes to play as and each class has its own weapons and gadgets that make them all fairly unique. The class I play is the driller. He has a flamethrower and he drills things. It's actually pretty cool. And the game works like this. You and your friends pick an assignment on the map to do and you teleport to that zone and you got to complete the objective given to you, which is either collect certain items, mine a certain amount of specific ore, or find and repair some missing equipment. You're dropped in a procedurally generated cavern that you dig around in, opening new paths and areas, all while fighting giant insectoid monsters and mining for precious minerals. Once you finish the objectives of the mission, you gotta call in a drop pod and race back to it before it departs, or before the alien swarm overcomes you. The core of the game is fun. You collect minerals you can use to upgrade your gear that add additional effects, and in-game achievements unlock points that you can spend like talent points to customize your playstyle. The actual art of playing the game is really satisfying, and this is coming from someone who doesn't usually play these types of mining games like Terraria or Minecraft. Blowing stuff up is fun, fighting aliens is fun, and digging around finding ways to get shinier and shinier ore is fun. It feels like a cheat to say this, but this game is at its best when playing with friends. Because most games are better when you're playing with friends, right? I played a little bit of Deep Rock solo and, yeah, you know, it's fine. It's peaceful, it's got a solid flow while playing. But it is mundane work that you're doing. It's just kind of like right click, right click, walk a little bit, right click, right click. It's not a whole lot of engagement, really. But without other people running around and exploring with you, it, it does feel mundane. You know, the maps become a little bit too big and jobs become a little bit too dull. And that sort of leads into the downside of Deep Rock Galactic, you know, there are only a few problems with it that I had, and the first is that it runs out of interesting content to do too quickly. I've played roughly 12 hours of Deep Rock, and I still only have half of the main hub available to me, with little incentive to really grind out more of the game to gain access to it. The game also feels lacking, right? There isn't a sense of tangible progression, it feels like I'm slowly buffing my character, sure, but those buffs really just make my character a little bit better. But the enemies don't get harder, the levels don't get more complex, and the tasks I'm asked to do don't get more interesting. It just feels like it gets very stagnant very quickly, like a concept that isn't fully fleshed out. They got the first part of the game down great, but after the initial enjoyment wears off, it's hard for me to keep coming back to. Deep Rock is a game that makes doing a mundane task fun. Sometimes you can enjoy running around a giant sprawling cave with your friends and just mine for crap. But eventually, the mundanity catches up to you. And out of all the games I'll talk about in this video, Deep Rock Galactic, despite being the only fully released game out of the bunch, is the one I have the hardest time coming back to play. Finally, Gunfire Reborn. Well, 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 well. If it isn't Gunfire Reborn, the cheapest and my most played of these games. Gunfire was sold to me as a roguelike Borderlands. Gunfire barely has a story, but it does have very satisfying to use weapons, and the weapons are quite creative. You got your rifles, your shotguns, your rocket launchers, your laser gloves, your throwing knives, your fireball barfing lizards, and your flame spinning dragons. I'm going to keep comparing gunfire to Borderlands for a few more seconds. So Borderlands brags about their bajillion guns or whatever, but there's never really a reason to use all of those guns unless you feel like trying out every different version of every different type of gun they got. But gunfire starts you off with only having a few guns available when you begin playing. 
but as you kill more enemies and bosses and complete more challenges, more and more guns get unlocked and are added to your pool of guns you can access on the next playthrough. And because of the randomized stats and upgrades on each gun, sometimes a weapon that isn't your favorite weapon is just better and you have to try it out. Gunfire encourages, if not flat out requires, you to use as many different guns as you can to beat it. So the game is a roguelike and you go through a handful of procedurally generated rooms and then fight a boss that is tough as shit. And repeat that like two more times and then the game is over. But this... This game is hard. Like, really, really hard. I've only just beaten the game recently, and I had over 20 hours played before I was able to achieve that. And I'm able to keep playing and replaying this game because of the difficulty and because of how different each run is. So not only are the weapon drops different, but also the talents you're offered are different. In Gunfire, after clearing out a room, you're given the option to pick one out of three of those talents, and when your run ends, your talents get reset. Not every talent is offered in one playthrough, just like Darksburg, so each run changes based on what talents you're being offered, alongside what guns appear and what scrolls drop. So scrolls are buffs that drastically affect how you play the game, granting buffs and debuffs and extra abilities, making certain weapons viable, certain weapons like not viable. And these scrolls work the exact same way guns do, in that when you first start playing Gunfire Reborn, only a small amount of the scrolls are in the pool. But just like with guns, by completing certain achievements and killing certain bosses and whatever, you unlock more scrolls that get added to your pool, making the game offer more and more variety the more and more you play it. So with different scrolls that drop, different guns that drop, different enemy encounters, and different talents, each run of Gunfire Reborn feels different. And because you are constantly unlocking new weapons and builds to try out, the game feels constantly rewarding. There's also the multiplayer aspect of Gunfire. You can run through the game with up to four people and the game scales its difficulty up with each person added and being able to trade items and power on through the game with your buds is top tier. Now Gunfire does have its problems, mainly what we've been calling sticky keys. Because of lag, it feels like you gotta mash some buttons sometimes to get the action to come out. And since Gunfire does run on a peer-to-peer -peer connection, lag and rubber banding can happen, even though it's infrequent, and that can create problems like sticky keys or lag at times. Despite not being an entirely finished product, Gunfire has been one of the most enjoyable games I've played this year, and even now I think the quality of its current content is good enough to be a completed game already. Whew. So, I don't know what this all means. I've just been playing a lot of four-player co-op games lately, and I kind of wanted to talk about them and their potential. I'll just summarize the games one last time, okay? Darksburg. It has a fun premise and an enjoyable first campaign, but it needs it needs more. More campaigns, more maps, more things to do. The tools the game offers are great, but the playground it puts you in to use those tools gets boring pretty fast. Deep Rock Galactic. It's a cathartic game that can get wild and crazy at times. It's a game that in small bursts with friends can be some of the most fun around, but the fun dies down pretty fast if you try to grind it all out at once. Gunfire Reborn. That is a Borderlands roguelike that uses both of those tags to its advantage, encouraging creativity and experimentation from the player by having them use weapons and talents they normally wouldn't. The game is quick and easy to pick up, and difficult to fully master, and immensely satisfying to beat. Thanks so much for watching whatever this was. I really appreciate it, and hopefully you check out some of these games if any of them seemed interesting to you. Uh, anyway, thanks again, have a good one, and take it easy.